What's up everyone, Beast Mode back here with another video. So today I wanted to cover the top four deck list from the recent 34 person BCS tournament. It's a single elimination tournament. We always have some big name players that play. Great event to just test decks for more premier tournaments. It's kind of like a little bit larger locals. Typically, I don't know, we've been averaging about 30 players. Um, unfortunately, they're kind of sporadic. It's based on when I have some free time and who's available to help run the tournament and or um, commentate on the stream. So anyway, these deck lists have been posted in the Edison War League slash Beast Mode Discord server, which is in the description. It is Edison War League playoffs. So if you're looking for some premier matches with big name players, I would highly recommend joining the server. You're able to watch all the replays of all the best players in the game. And um, it's really starting to get down to the end. We'll see if we have a repeat champion in team um, Bongo Boys or will someone else take the crown? Anyway, the reason why I want to make the video is because the first place deck I found to be the most interesting, obviously here, this is Evolution's Vayu Turbo deck, very similar to all other Vayu Turbo decks. Um, he is the captain of Team X, so shout out to him. But anyway, um, I'm not sure if there's anything real different here. Uh, maybe one hamster, it's either one or two. Uh, one oppression in the main deck seems to be the proper number. I, I, I do see some decks with two. This is the first time I'm looking at these decks, to be honest, so we'll kind of go over them live, essentially. One dust in the main, that's interesting because of all the legacy running around. I'm not even sure if this is any good, but um, sideboard here. My body has been uh, in a lot of sideboards lately. Double Dust for Blackwing and the second impression. So this is very standard. Uh, so fourth place goes to Evolution with Bayou Turbo. Third place is Carpath with his signature Neo Spacian deck. I don't believe this deck is very good, but I also have never really played it. It seems to be one of his favorites, and he, he's, a, he's a great player. So um, the problem with the deck is I think it's just awfully so, uh, slow. Sorry. It doesn't have much of a early game. It really sits around and kind of... Doesn't do much until Creator's Live mid to late game, but um, it does do some cool stuff. This card, this uh, Convert Contact is pretty cool. It's like a glorified Destiny draw, but um, he seems to do well with the deck. It's not very popular. I've seen some videos with it on you know various local scene, but I'm not sure this will ever win a large event. Possible. It depends on the pilot and you know if Carpath decides to play something play a serious event you know what i mean he, he could probably make a deep run but sideboard here i'm not even sure why this is in the sideboard this is interesting that oh maybe you could like copy a um a gladiator beast and make your own geyserus i'm guessing I, again i don't know the intricacies of this deck that's kind of cool i think it has some really cool plays that you can do with this card here um that people probably don't expect um but sideboard here deck devi is also a great card to be able to sideboard so that's strong because of the deck the dark creator so this card this deck does have some tools that are um that could impact the current metagame so i do think it has a shot but i'm not sure again maybe it's not popular enough to really win a tournament you don't really see it top unless he's playing it so um but it, shout out to carpath third place second place is 10 foot so again the top you know players here have all topped events already um so again these tournaments are pretty stacked with competition um signature frog deck that he's been on for probably the past year now i think he's pretty much moved away from bayou turbo just because he does not want to be playing mirror matches and i think that he feels that this deck's probably better but um double swap is kind of his thing and uh this looks very typical of hero frog i think there is a little bit of variation he does play a lot more traps than typical um but now we have people running the legacies and jars so there are a few like hero frog builds with either like limited traps i think Fraser's deck plays like three or four and then you have the draw deck which is like a bunch of jar greeds and yadas and then you have his deck that seems to be playing a lot more traps um sideboard here is pretty cool this card has been um seeing a lot of play in frog sideboards the breaker which is actually a really good card in frogs i didn't realize initially but this card can out a lot of the floodgates that might shut them down, like Master Restrict and Zombie World or whatnot. Um, Karma Cut's also seeing a lot of play. I have not tested this card myself. I probably should. Um, and then, again, a 10-foot special is uh, more and more traps. So a couple more D-Prisons, and um, which are pretty good because people, if you're playing the Frog matchup, you obviously want to be able to out the Vandy Sphine. So there are some um, applications where traps are like actually decent in Frogs. But I think he's taking it to the whole another level with, <laughs> with all these. But um, this card here is probably should not be in sideboards, in my opinion. But what do I know? Because there's just too many legacies running around. And you will get caught um, if you slam this on the table at one, a matter of time before someone flips a legacy. So um, I'm not sure this card is worth, if the juice is worth the squeeze, as they say. Because 
Um, it probably comes in a specific matchups, maybe Amaryllis or something, but um, it could even come in the frog ma matchup. But if the frogs are playing the jars and yadas, they're going to feast on this. I don't think it's ever happened to me. It probably very rarely happens, but now because of the popularity of Legacy, which is like the new hot thing, um, this card might find its way falling out of sideboards. But again, I'm not a frog player, so who knows? Um, extra decks, pretty much the same. So shout out to 10 foot second place. In first place, so this deck list was actually featured in paper on Echo YGO's channel. I'm almost positive it was his channel, so check him out. He does make great Edison content anyway. Um, player by the name of Raw Noodle, and um, I'm not overly familiar with him. Um, you know, I've seen his name around. I like the name. And um, so he does a good job explaining some of his card choices in that video, so definitely check it out. And um, and it's, he has, like, all high rarity cards, too, so it was pretty cool to see. But... The reason why I find this deck interesting is because it, this is really Diva Hero. I know people see the zombie cards and like, oh, it's Diva Zombie Hero. I'm not convinced um, just because it plays four zombies. And this card is in regular Diva Hero anyway. So it plays three different or three additional zombie cards. And um, it doesn't play like the typical zombie build. Like the, the zombie hero deck plays less Miracle Fusions, plays some Recruiters. They Some of the builds play the book of life so they do a little bit more they're gearing towards the, the zombie um side of the deck more where i feel that this here is just adding a couple of the zombie cards just to give it a little bit more of a mid game where goblin zombie is a little bit better opener into um Rikos potentially but also gives you the the chance to set you know set a, a, a goblin zombie and then tribute for kaya so it gives you a little bit of something it also makes foolish better because you you know foolish is a good card to play with just malicious but the problem is you don't want to just play malicious with foolish like that's not great but if you play mizuki and of course you play plague that gives you another target so this card gets a little bit better um so i do think this is more diva hero than diva hero zombie and i think that this is not a bad way to take the diva hero deck just because i feel like diva hero is like all gas anyway um and i like i said i have some experience with playing diva hero and again i'm not on a true heroes level or any of these diva hero level uh player level at all um i was able to top an event with minimal uh preparation and that's just because the deck is broken when it draws well the problem is the deck does not have any real mid game and if you like pretty much play this deck you vomit out your hand and if it if you get there you get there um of course the better players play far better with the deck but that's kind of my was my experience like if you open a future fusion miracle fusion you just slam all your cards on the table and then like your opponent either can break the board or they can't where this here gives you a little bit more of that like okay i can't you know win the game right now my hand's not that busted yet but maybe we can wait a couple turns and you can sit here and like cycle through a couple goblin zombies um also gives you a little bit more of a uh, synchro push like a, a mild synchro push rather than trying to win the game one turn you can kind of do a little um level six play with the mizuki and, st and stuff so this does give you a little bit more options of course legacy is the main spice of the month right now i think this card is really going to change the way the i know it's not game breaking from reading the card but i think it's going to change the way people play I feel like spell and trap or removal are pretty much useless right now, which is also going to create a dynamic where are the cards in the back row real or not? Um, and I, I think Frazier and um, Zach Faze Sizzle just posted a video together talking about it. I actually haven't even been able to watch it yet, but um, so check out Omnerd's channel to, to see that. But again, I, I like the wing blast. That's always fun. The card's pretty broken if you can uh, set it up, but you need to have the adequate amount of discards. Sideboard here. Breakers in every sideboard. I've been playing this myself in a few tournaments. I think this card is really good. Um, of course, it's not great with Jar Greeds, but you got to bring it in in specific matchups. Kaiku's been seeing a lot of play too for a long time. Everybody believed this card was butt and not very good, but um, I think it's probably better than what we thought. Snowman's always good in this deck. Super Poly is great in any deck that can make absolute zero. Triple Dust seems to be standard. That's about the only card you can bring in to get first Blackwing. Triple Pulling, I'm not a huge, huge fan of this card. I think you need to play some number of them, but three, I don't know. This card does not work as well as you want to into Monarchs a lot of the time, especially good players just side in a few Vandy's Fiend, and then you have like three cards you can hit. Um, but anyway, this deck was really cool. I like it. I've, I've actually played a game or two on Dueling Book with it. Felt like Diva Hero, definitely. Um, but again, I didn't play enough matches to like see the whole how much better this is than just playing straight diva hero but um i do see the idea behind it I, I feel like that's what he was going for but again you can check out the in paper list i highly recommend that on echo ygo's channel i'll try to link it in the description i'm still not very good with youtube but um with that being said i'll see you on the next one